but there's already 15 tug companies out there racing to the bottom. Mark Patey is going to spill the secret sauce that makes them so successful on this episode of Taking Off. I had a chance to catch up with Mark Patey, whose twin brother, Mike, has just made the news helping engineer that incredible feat in Dubai where they landed the plane on the helipad at one of those really tall skyscrapers. Just incredible. But I got to sit down with Mark as he was coming through Dallas on his Pilatus PC-12, aptly named Perry, to talk about not only the Pilatus, but about Best Tug's real new announcement about the new Papa Tug for helicopters. Let's start with Perry. There's just yeah. so much to talk to you about. Sure. Let's start with Perry the Pilatus. This is my dream plane. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Tell me about how the dream came true. Because you, you started where I was at. I have a 210. Uh -huh. I think you had a 210, we didn't did, you? We did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 210 so, was so our second So tell me, airplane. what is my roadmap for getting here? Oh, man. A lot of work, a little luck, <laughs> a lot more work, a little more luck. <laughs> um, you know, we, we graduated to this airplane over a lot of years, and a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, ask, you know, how do you, how do you get, you know, to where you can have a plane like this? And I never had any easy wins. I never had any big home runs. Um, just worked really hard and graduated to the next airplane and the next airplane. And, um, and it, of course, hard work alone doesn't make it happen, but I didn't get to come into money all at once. I didn't get to get into this airplane all at once. It was a lot of little base hits. All, one business after mm -hmm. a little base hit, build a company, sell it, no home run, no life changing thing, just another base hit and that's it. Just a bunch of, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Babe Ruth. This plane didn't come that way. It just base hits all my whole life. Okay, well some people will look at the Pateys and say, uh, you guys, it's just landing in your lap, but that's not the case, is it? I wish. <laughs> Golly. In fact, I, I've, um, no matter what success you have, there's, there's somebody with way, way, way more. Right. And I, um, I at times feel like I don't have anything um, because of who I'm associating with. And then other times where I'm with someone going, oh my gosh, I, all you have to do is live in America and you have more than such a huge percentage of the global population. That, um, so perspective's everything. But um, no, it didn't fall on our lap. This, and, and I can't say this is here forever. I, my wife and I have a saying when we're flying, even my brother Mike and I were like, wow, we're, is this really our life? And it doesn't matter who says it. They say, is this really our life? The other one follows up with, well, it is today. It is today. Yeah. That's and nice. You never and it's know. Not the, you're not jet setters because it is a turbine, a turbo, yeah. a turboprop. You yeah, gotta, we, we you tried just, a jet for a while. We had an Eclipse jet. Oh, really? Then we went to a Premier A1A, and right. then we went back to Eclipse jet, and finally just accepted the fact that uh, my rice dice don't roll that big. I, I, yeah. just, I just can't play in that world. Okay, well, so tell me what is the difference between owning a jet, because as somebody who yeah. doesn't walk in that world yeah. versus owning a Pilatus. Why would you go back to um, a, a turboprop? Well, the Premier Jet, and like a lot of jets, they're not that expensive to buy. Right. Um, the acquisition suckers you into a world that you can't afford. That was my, for mm. me, my, my life and my lifestyle and budget. I was suckered into the lure of the Eclipse Jet, which is really quite affordable little jet acquisition and flying. And then we moved into the Premier Jet and the fuel bills, the maintenance bills, the insurance bills. Within less than two years, I felt like if I keep owning this airplane, I will lose my home, I will lose my business, I have no money to reinvest, it's all going into an airplane. And so the real big difference is this Pilatus is significantly more money than the Premier Jet. To, to purchase. To purchase. And but the hourly cost, the insurance cost, and certainly the maintenance cost. This plane is dispatch ready, 10 out of 10 flights, it's ready to go, it doesn't break, it's just reliable. And so I can afford, I always say I could never afford to own a Pilatus. And the reality is, I really should have been saying I can't afford to buy a Pilatus, but I could afford to own it. Mm. And what happened to me was, is I could afford to buy a Premier Jet, but I could not afford to own oh, the Premier Jet. So if you say a, 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 a 
used Premier Jet at a million six to two million bucks and he used Pilatus at two to three million, the Pilatus is twice the money. But I actually fly it and I actually use it because I can afford its operating cost and the jet, no way, uh, just going broke. <laughs> just couldn't afford it. All right, how'd you find Perry? So uh, Perry, I've had my eyes on for a long time. In 2002, this airplane landed new at um, Spanish Fork Airport, our home airport. And when it landed, I, it was my favorite airplane, my dream airplane, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I walked up, it, the people were taking delivery of it. It's actually a 2001 airplane, but I think the factory had it for a little while. And so mm -hmm. 2002, they took delivery. I walk up to these total strangers and I'm like, I can't believe there's a Pilatus at little old Spanish Fork Airport. And they're like, hey, it's got 10 seats. We got the jump seat in the back far left corner. And if you want to go for a ride, we're going for our first flight. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You put 10 people and go. And so I sat in the very back left corner in this very airplane, 2-2 Lima Papa. And um, with what then ended up becoming friends and, and investment partners on different things, but um, for its first delivery. And um, when we got back, uh, I sat in that back seat as everybody unloaded and I said someday I will own this airplane and I was really talking about a Pilatus but to right. actually own that very this one. very airplane is, is just awesome so it stayed in Spanish Fork it sold from that person to one of my closest friends who kept it for about six years and kept the same pilot flying with him then it sold to another good friend and, and business partner who kept it for another six or eight years oh that and long wow. same same uh same pilot helping him fly it and um i told him when you're ready to sell it i'm next Call me. yeah like it's not leaving our airport the dry climate the professionally owned and operated and so when he was ready to get his new platus we we got perry so i've i've got i've got my four sons you know running around and and running and operating it at best tugs and best aviation products well at the time when i was drooling over a Pilatus, my son Trevor said, what's your favorite airplane? What's your dream airplane? He knew how much I loved it. He's just a little kid. And I said, it's, it's called the Pilatus. And he says, dad, if you get a Pilatus, you have to name it Perry. And I'm like, why? And he says, Perry the Platus Puss. And because Phineas and Ferb yeah, was their we, favorite cartoon. Watched, so, I watched it with my son when he was little. Yeah. So, so that's why we call it Perry. The, the name Perry painted on the front of the airplane is is me keeping a commitment to a, a young a young boy that made who's me now promise. a man <laughs> who's now a man yes and incidentally um just announced that he and his wife are expecting oh wow so he's almost a dad now yeah so this will be grandbaby number four for us oh wow yeah okay so tell me about the prop okay so the um prop for us was about performance and the prop that we had was we did the engine upgrade which we can talk about as well but after the engine upgrade was on, we were like we've got this new engine and a prop that's really coming up on another overhaul. It's got 6,900 hours on it. We had to go to a slightly different prop because this engine needed a different prop. So we bought a used prop. Mm. We put the new engine on, you have to have a, a prop that's been shot peened. It okay. hardens the outside right. layer for the more horsepower of the engine. So we had to get a prop off of an NG Pilatus and I just was like, I'm getting new paint, new interior, new engine new avionics new everything for perry and i just can't have that four blade on there and then um so i already won the five blade because it's cool and then turns out you can justify it because it is a little bit faster okay it's a lot better on the takeoff and a lot better on the climb so um hartzell's one of those companies um that I'm really proud to say is not like some aviation companies where they give these ridiculously optimistic numbers that in the real world right. none of us humans actually see. Right. Um, and Hartzell's the opposite. I think they understate their numbers because they said this prop would be 10% shorter on the takeoff roll from 0 to 90, 10% quicker 0 to 90, and 10% uh, better on the climb to altitude. And um, I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing closer to 12 to 15% on the takeoff roll and 12 to 15% on wow. the climb. So when they say 10, they are really conservative. Okay. Bank on it. If you just in your mind say, I'm going to get 10, you're going to be pleasantly surprised like me. And you're like, that's better than 10. Wow. Okay. 
uh, I've heard that the more props you have, the more uh, drag you're going to have. Is, sure. Is that not the case? No, it's, ab it's absolutely the case. And so, yeah, a, a prop is nothing more than a spinning wing. Right. And you have more wing, you have, you have more drag. The uh, old prop was aluminum. This okay. prop is composite. The profile on this prop is so thin that it's, it's shocking that you can harness all that horsepower. And by going to five blades, each prop's pulling less weight. Okay. Um, and now you've got the composite, which can be thinner, less weight per blade, which allows you to get thinner. So you then end up bringing your drag down with an added blade instead of up. Okay. The other thing is, um, like any wing, the higher angle of attack, the less efficient. And so if you've got four blades up at altitude and really thin air, taking a pretty big bite to harness the horsepower of that engine, they're getting a little less efficient. Uh, Whereas okay. five blades that don't have to capture as much horsepower each, they don't have to have such a high angle of attack to harness that horsepower, they get a little bit more efficient. So there is a point where you add too many blades, or you add blades that get fat and thick, you're just going to slow down. Um, this five bladed prop, they, they nailed it. Now, um, they say one to two knots faster in cruise at altitude, and I think that number's accurate. Um, yesterday I was comparing our flight down here to Texas to another flight at the same weight and same outside air temperature and same altitudes and to the old prop. I, I'd like right. to spreadsheet everything. <laughs> and course. on that flight I was seeing uh, 3.2 knots higher true air speed. Um, but that's just one flight. That's not enough to say this is what it is. But when they say one to two knots faster, absolutely. When you would expect, you get shorter takeoff, you get faster climb is super absolutely worth it instead of a 19 minute climb to altitude i'm closer to 16. wow right um but to do that without compromising top end even if they said shorter takeoff faster climb shorter stopping when you pull it into reverse on a grass strip all those things and break even on the top end would be a win it would be a win takeoff win landing win climb and no loss on the top end but we actually still got one or two knots squeeze out a little bit yeah Amazing. It's, it's a okay. home run. All right. Well, so maybe someday. Um, yeah. So uh, let's let's move on now. Um, you at Best Product, uh, Best Aviation Products, you guys have announced a new tug, yeah. and it is not the Tango. No, not yet. Which is what I was expecting, but you yeah. picked a different letter. So yeah. tell us about the new product. So the, the new one's the Papa, uh, for pad. It's a helicopter pad, and um, so it, it's uh, for us. We live in Utah. Yeah. And we get snow and ice, and we also aren't allowed to leave a helicopter pad on the ramp. And so in the summer, to take a helicopter pad out of the hangar, lift a helicopter off, set it down, have somebody there to drive our helicopter pad back in, or sit in a running chopper to drive it back in, was a nuisance. So we wanted a pad that could dispatch in snow and ice, because the other tugs on the market at our airport can't. Um, they just don't, unless you've got a lot of people to help push. Or it's not really snow or icy, right? In right. Um, the perfect, perfect scenario, it might make it a little bit, but it, out of the hangar, but probably not gonna climb the hill back in. So for us, we're like, we wanna dispatch in snow and ice, and we wanna be able to get it out on the grass. Because if we just pull it out on the grass or behind the side of the hangar into the gravel, we can be out of people's way and just leave it and fly away, and come back and land on it and drive it back into the hangar. So for us, the biggest thing was, we want it to be four wheel drive, so you can, so it's more versatile and we can get it out of the way. And then we wanted to take up less space because hangar space is hard to get these days. We got three, four year waiting lists for a hangar. Mm, right. And now we're paying premiums for hangar. We're paying more money in, in Utah, and I know other places around the country are the same. We're paying more money per square foot for a hangar that we don't even own the land that the hangar's sitting on. Right. And we're paying more money per square foot for that leased space um, to buy the hangar on leased ground than to build a brand new custom home. And so when hangar space is as expensive as it is, tugs suddenly are cheap if the tug can fold have, have up. Have a low profile, a low footprint. A low footprint. Yeah. And so, and the bigger the tug is, the safer it is. So for a helicopter landing pad, when the market's been mostly 14 foot or 16 foot, um, uh, 14 foot for a lot of helicopter pilots, it's unnerving. And 16 right. foot is okay. Um, but we're like, we can make a 15 foot and a 17 foot. The 17 foot's huge. Like right. student pilot can land on that, right? right? 
And then, but the problem is you make a helicopter pad that's big enough that you can safely land on it without a lot of experience, you know, or newish pilot. Um, well, now it takes up your whole hangar. So yeah. we made the folding sides. So right now our 17 by 17 helicopter pad, um, when it's opened up, it's the biggest helicopter pad on the planet that we're aware of. And um, when the sides fold up, it takes up less space in the hangar than the smallest helipad on the planet that we know of. Okay, so, so watching the video that where you yeah. released this, um, just looking at it, it was freaking amazing yeah, of, of all the different things that you had. And it made me want to, um, it made me want to just get my helicopter rating yeah. so I could go buy that pad. <laughs> we heard that a lot, and, and I was really flattered by that. Um, but it was one of the more common uh, comments on the, you know, everybody um, replying to the video was, "That's so cool!" Now I want to fly helicopters, and um, I know people say that in jest, but that's that's how aviation really happens. When they see yeah. a really cool Cirrus airplane, they didn't know airplanes could be sexy and cool and have enough space for two guys to not sweat on each other like other airplanes on the market. Right. Suddenly it brings people in that weren't there. And, um, and why can't aviation be cool? It doesn't have to be ugly. It doesn't have to be inconvenient. You know, it unfortunately isn't cheap, but it's, uh, it's, it's worth the investment. Tell me about, let's talk about that philosophy real quick. Um, you know, uh, pilots are in a very expensive world um, where everything is expensive. Every, every screw, every nut, every bolt is expensive. Right. So as pilots, we're also probably the group that complains the most, yeah. especially about cost. And yeah. so I want it cheap and everything else, but you, with your best aviation products, um, have said, I'm not, I'm not going to even address that. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make quality products, but you know we're going to have to pay for them. How has that worked for you, and where did you come up with that philosophy? So when we first started, um, the first company within Best Aviation Products was Best Tugs, and I started it with my kids. They all have some ownership, and I told them, when we when we're, we're going to build a superior product, we're going to have auto throttles and traction control and auto braking and auto wheel chalk or park when it stops. It'll lock the brakes and hold the airplane on the ramp. And we're going to make it low profile so it doesn't clear the prop. I said, but we're going to be more money. And the kids are like, well, won't we sell more if we sell it for yes and for less? And I said, maybe. But there's already 15 tug companies out there racing to the bottom. <laughs> right. And that's not what we wanted to be. And so our philosophy was if we could be 20% more money, and provide twice the product and service, then we're and a better value. value. Yeah. And so that's been our goal from the start. Um, and we grossly un underestimated how that would work. Yeah. And the demand. We thought for sure that we would, I told my kids, if we do everything right, within three years, I want to be shipping a tug every week. Right. Three to four tugs a month. We have to build a crate every single week. We have to weld the frame. We have to powder coat it. We have to wire it. We have to put all the chains and harnesses and build harnesses and machine a display panel. And every week we got to get one of those out there. Oh yeah, and we have to sell one every week. That was our goal. Is if we could ship one every week, we might be able to help you put yourselves through college. <laughs> and um, when we hit that three-year goal, we were shipping five a day. Wow. So it significantly underestimated the market, and we ship all over the world. And so being. Um, the philosophy has worked for us, and the new the new Papa Pad, the new uh, Heli Pad, was the same thing. Nobody else has had four wheel drive. Nobody has articulating suspension. Um, now, Nobody it, has folding sides. It's not or that fuel you've tanks. got one thing that separates. It's like a laundry list of things that separate your 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 equipment from the competition. There's no doubt. Well, well we have fun with it. Did someone <laughs> that was another YouTube comment. And I'm like, they don't know how true that is. But someone made the comment. They said it's like the Patey brothers sit around all day going, what else? can we do what else can we do what else can we do true. and then we do it <laughs> and I'm like I'm like that that's exactly how it is when is Papa shipping so the first one will probably ship in about three four weeks and um, we're gonna try to keep up with demand we we thought that it would take you know a while for orders to start coming in we put the video out on a Saturday right and um, we don't answer our sales line or regular business line um, on Saturdays and Sundays. But a lot of our customers know that our support line, if um, it forwards to cell phone numbers. Right. And if someone's available, we're not open. Right. But if someone's available, and usually somebody is, there's at least three people that it'll forward to. And if, if they're not in church or in a movie or somehow disposed, they'll answer it. 
and um, before the day was done on Sunday, we were already three, four months booked out in orders. Wow. We had that many customers that already had one of our products reach out and go, I knew I'd get somebody on your support line. You might not answer a sales call, but you'll take care of me. And, and they placed orders. And so we were Monday morning, um, the email box and the voicemail box for the sales department was so full that we realized that um, we grossly underestimated the demand for a, a okay. premium helicopter pad. And then what about uh, the Tango? What is the Tango? What can you, can, can I get a scoop here? No, no, but the, the Tango, the, the Tango's just, you know, you just expect, we're, we'll keep building ground support equipment, anything that's aviation products related that we think we can improve on, we're gonna try to tackle. And I know that's an ambitious thing to say, but there's a few things we've looked at in aviation. I'm like, I really wanna build those. Right. That's a good product. There's a good margin there. We can add that to our product line, and then I'll look at it and look at it and look at it. I'm like, they did a great job. I don't think I can really improve on that. I can uh, make it look different, but I can't make it live up to the best, right? You, right. you can't say you're the best if you're not the best. All right, last question, Mark. Okay. You and Mike, you know, your engineering marvels and your hard work is evident. You know, with all the planes, Draco and Scrappy and Turbulence, when, no regrets, yeah. ambush. When are we going to see a Best Aviation Products airplane? Oh, man. Um, uh, that's a tough thing. Mike and I have actually designed two really cool airplanes. Oh, you have? Yeah. So you, it's on your radar? It's absolutely on the radar. We designed a really, a really cool twin and a really cool single. And um, I don't know if that'll ever come to life. Uh, we spent a lot of time and money on it. We put a lot of engineers on it and um, they're pretty cool. And I think they'd be worth building. Um, but we pulled back, you know, it's tough. You, you, get, you get one life, you got one family, you, you got your business to run. There's only 24 hours in a day. And so when we, if I can figure out how to get best aviation products to run without needing me all the time, then maybe we can focus on that but right now it's, it's not on the radar but they they are conceptually there and they're pretty cool so it's true that the paydees only have 24 hours in a day they only have one life <laughs> they only have one family and yet you guys get so much accomplished it's amazing oh uh, it's it's caffeine <laughs> so. well yeah you know and i've lost my diet coke buddy with uh, mike, mike giving up Quentin, diet yeah. coke, but you drink diet cokes i, I diet okay. coke diet dr pepper and well oh, there's Bull. another thing too um Mike and I celebrate the smallest wins in really big ways, and that's uh, motivating. Like mm. every little success, we're like, oh, high five, that was awesome. And then, I mean, even if it's Mike, he'll call me. I'll be out of town. He'll call and say, hey, I got this part made. I'm like, that's awesome. Send me pictures. And he sends me pictures, and he's, instead of, I'm exhausted, I finally got it done, you get kind of re-energized. And we do that for each other. We're like each other's cheerleaders. We, I would say we over-celebrate and that gives you uh, uh, energy to keep going. So it's not caffeine, it's encouragement. That's the secret. That, that, yeah, the caffeine definitely helps, but I would say you're right. When you got a cheerleader, and I'm, I was blessed to be raised in a family that I got a whole family full of cheerleaders, but when you got a twin brother like Mike, and he and I are, are major cheerleaders, overly excited for each other in, in even the smallest of successes, we don't hold back. You know, it, it could be anything. And I'll be like, Mike, holy crap, that's cool. I know, right? And we can just be animated and fun and ridiculous and celebrate. And uh, that definitely increases the energy level. And you just like want to do it again. Like, what, what other little thing can I build and show Mike? And Mike said, what other cool little thing I can finish and show Mark? And he'll call me at one in the morning. Mark, guess what I got done? I'm like, no way, that's so awesome. I don't say, why are you call me at one in the morning? I'm like, that's unbelievable. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, I'm not going back to get, I gotta, I gotta have Mark wake up and see something else is done. And so we, we encourage each other and, and um, over, over celebrate. It's awesome. It's always a pleasure to sit down with Mark Patey. Those guys are just amazing. And remember, encouragement is the secret sauce of what keeps them going and what has helped them to succeed so much encouragement. So if you can encourage somebody today, I, I, I encourage you to do it. 
All right, now I wanna thank our sponsors, encourage them, because they certainly encourage us. And we're gonna be putting that up on the screen. Our sponsors are all run by pilots. They're pilot-run companies. If you can support them, we can keep it in the aviation family. But more importantly, they make great products and services. We vet all of them. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time on Taking Off. Mm -hmm.